Okay, hey everybody, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to power a DC motor with our Arduino so that when we press a button it spins around for a predetermined amount of time and then it stops. So I got my wiring here for just the DC motor and it's pretty simple. You have your power supply going up one end and then the other end back in the ground. And if we were to turn that on, it will kind of spin around. Uh, our time on this thing is being weird for some reason, but just trust me on this. It spins around when you plug them in, and here it is spinning clockwise. If we were to switch the order of the battery, so say, or of the wires, so say I was to take this end and do this one into five volts and this one in the ground, it would go the other way, counterclockwise. So it really doesn't matter uh, the power, um, the like the plus and the minus on this. It's just going to change the direction that it spins. Now, if we wanted to control this with an Arduino and program it, we could think back to the LEDs that we were using before. And it might be a good idea that if I were to put this in the 13, and then I were to program 13. Maybe there's a variable there, but if I were to have 13 as an output and then turn 13 high, that should work, but you can see it doesn't work. And that is because the pins on the Arduino, they can't provide enough current to really get these motors going. So what we need to do is we need to use a transistor. And we're going to use an NPN transistor and what this thing is, is it allows current to pass through from our five volts if we just give this a signal. So let me show, um, let me show you the wiring here. And I'll go over all of this, but let me just isolate the uh, transistor first. From the plus, we have this power going through. And then we have from pin 13 and then through a 1K resistor, you could be inaccurate with this amount. It's just something to make sure it's not getting the full brunt of that current. And if this turns this high, then it allows the current to pass through. And there are three different pins on this. There's the emitter, the base, and the collector. The emitter is what outputs the signal. It's on, um, so it's what goes in after. The base is what we control, and then the collector is what takes in the current. So if we're to look at this, this is our collector because it collects that five volts. Then this is our base because it controls whether or not it is letting this power through. Then finally, we have the emitter here because that is what lets the current through. You can see it goes from here. And if we turn this on, then this goes through, it goes up the motor and back down through here and into ground. It completes that circuit just like this does, in, um, except that we have this uh, transistor that is controlling it. Now, a couple things about this transistor. First, this is an NPN transistor, which you need to check that you have and you are using. If you are using a PMP transistor or some other kind, it will not work like this. So there's really, really small print on these transistors that you should check out and see if it's the correct kind that you have. And once you do, you will see that there's one flat side. And then if you point the flat side at you, you will have the emitter on the left. The base is always in the center and then the collector over on the right. Now let's look at what else we have going on here. So we have this push button, which controls whether or not this pin outputs the signal to the transistor. Now this is a little different than the kind that we had when we were doing uh, the light in the second tutorial. That time we had a pull down resistor because it pulled it down into ground. And we could have done that with this one. If we wanted to, we could definitely have a pull down resistor. And then if that uh, pin goes high up here, then we would do whatever we want to. However, I want to kind of show the different ways of doing this. So the other one is a pull down resistor. This one is a pull up resistor. So I have a 10K resistor going into this row from the five volts. Now, this is gonna be on because right now this push button is not being pressed. 
So the five volts goes up here and then it's kind of, it's looking for a place to go and it's gonna turn this on. But then if we were to press this button, it gives it a nice clear path to ground. So it gives us a nice circuit there. And then because all of the resistance is done up here, that means that there's nothing left here and this is going to go low. So instead of checking if this is high, like it was before, this time we are going to check if it's low because we are pulling this up rather than pulling it down. And I just wanted to show the different ways of doing this. And there's actually one other way that we could do with the Arduino that's the easiest of all, but I just kind of wanted to start with this. Um, and finally here, we have this diode. Before we were using light emitting diodes to light up a bunch of stuff. And this is just a diode that doesn't, uh, that doesn't emit light. And the reason that we have this is because we have this motor right here. And after the motor stops getting power, it still has like current in that coil. And now that thing has nowhere to go. And it's gonna be looking for a place to go out and it could bust up our transistor or do some bad things that we don't want it to. So what the diode allows is that it allows the current to go out here and then go back up the diode, up, up and up and up. Now, the thing about the diode, if you remember from the LEDs, is that it only allows current to go one way. So it can only go this way. If we just had a wire here, the uh, current would just go round down and then right into ground. It would, skip the, it would skip the motor entirely, but it can't go down this way. It can only go this way. And the way to tell to, um, the way that it's going to go is you have this black stripe right here. And the black stripe is the cathode of it. So the power can go this way and then out the side with the black stripe on it. If you were to try to make it go this way, nothing would happen. It wouldn't work. So that is our wiring for that. Now let's get to some programming. So I have two pins to set up, pin mode 13, and that is going to be an input. And then I have pin mode 12, and that is going to be an output. Okay, we're just gonna do an if then statement where if, actually we're gonna have a variable first. So int button, that is going to equal digital read on pin 13. And then if the button, if it equals equals, remember, because we're checking if they're equivalent, so we want two equal signs. If that equals low, so this is different than the first time because this is already high because it's getting that current from this plus and it's going up there. And the only reason that it goes low is because now the power scene is a nice, easy way to get into ground and there's much less resistance going this way than there would be if they had to go all the way up here. So they are going through there. So if that equals low, then we want to just digital write. So we want a digital write. I, And that is going to be pin 13, and we want to turn it high. And we could do an if then else statement so that when you press the button, it turns it on. Um, or you can wait a little bit. Let's wait, let's wait four seconds. And then after that, we're just gonna turn it off. Okay, I'm gonna upload this. If I press it, make sure it's plugged in. Oh, I did something wrong here. Oh, I turned the input on, which I don't want to do. I want to turn the output on. Loading. And there it goes. I'll go for four seconds, and then I'll turn off. Perfect, so you can control a DC motor however you want with your Arduino. Just make sure that you have all of these components in there. They are all essential and you need to make sure that you are using all of them. So that's it for this DC motor. In our next tutorial, we are going to learn how to use a servo motor, 
which allows you to control precisely where exactly that motor is. And it's really fun and useful. So I'll see you then. Have a good one.